Hello again and welcome back to another module in the context of Marine Ecomed Erasmus Plus project. This module has been prepared by the Greek Environmental NGO for the Preservation of Aquatic Ecosystems, IC. I am Anastasia Haritu and together with my colleague Ioannis Yovos, we have prepared and we are going to present you this module concerning knowledge empowerment, strategies in order to enhance environmental awareness and sustainable use of resources. Let me now introduce you to the contents of uh, this particular module. First, we are going to present you the steps of uh, raising awareness projects. Then, we are going to present you possible approaches and tools that can be used in order to raise awareness. And by examining the case of the Greek island Santorini, we are going to present to you the way that efficient knowledge empowerment can lead to effective marine protected areas. In the end, we are going to examine the example of fisheries ecolabels and particularly you are going to be informed about the procedure of fisheries ecolabeling and the advantages and disadvantages as uh, this ecolabeling is a knowledge empowerment strategy. Sustainable use of natural resources requires the involvement of each local community in every step of sustainable development, from the scientific research to the um, development of action plans and the enforcement of measures. And this requires the environmental awareness ed and education of local communities. Through the procedure of their environmental awareness and education, stakeholders acquire and exchange knowledge, skills, values, and their determination, either among them or between scientists. This enables them to act individually and collectively, aiming the sustainable development, and it also enables them to solve problems and prevent problems. Let's now see the steps of awareness raising projects according to IUCN. First of all, the issue that evolves and must be solved must be identified. Then, the stakeholders that the project is going to target must also be identified. The setting of realistic goals follow, as well as the development of appropriate tools that are going to be used during the planning and the implementation of particular activities which aim the awareness raising among stakeholders. The next steps of this project should be the monitoring and the evaluation of the previous steps as well as the assessment of the impact of the total project. The approaches of the tools that are going to be used and the activities that are going to be implemented could be compared to advertising, as their goal is to attract the targeted groups and make them capable of contributing to the issue. So, an uh, approach that could be used is the information approach, according to which we present the problem to the targeted group as well as the causes and the possible solutions to this problem. The emotional approach is really based on the values of the targeted stakeholder group and the behavior approach is the approach that directly encourages behavioral changes of the targeted groups. We are now going to show you uh, different tools that in which different approaches have been chosen for different reasons. The particular poster was uh, created uh, for the needs of an awareness raising campaign against plastic. The information approach was chosen because this poster targets uh, older school students. So, on your left, first the problem is presented through real facts, like uh, how many single-use bottles a country may use yearly. And underneath, uh, the impact of um, plastic debris is presented 
uh, through the consequences of plastic, in particular marine species. In the right of the poster, you can see that possible solutions are pre presented, such as the replacement of single-used objects with uh, uh, reusable ones, or by promoting the ban of particular items from our everyday life, like balloons. For younger school students, the emotional approach was chosen. It is known that children of that age present in pro-environmental attitudes and sympathize to non-human lives. So, the poster depicts a different marine species suffering from plastic debris and expressing their feelings. This way, it promotes empathy towards marine life affected by plastic pollution. We are going to present you the behavior approach from another poster which was created in the context of another awareness raising campaign against plastic. This poster promotes behavioral changes by suggesting uh, the best personal choices that, that one should uh, have in order to reduce his or her per personal uh, plastic debris in his everyday life. Other tools that can be used and activities that can be implemented in order to raise awareness among targeted groups are dialogues and meetings with them, round tables and workshops with the participation of relevant stakeholders, conferences and symposia, relevant fairs and events, including activities that raise awareness among targeted groups for particular issues, and published material or media outlets. Let's now examine two different examples concerning knowledge empowerment strategies about fisheries. The first example concerns the knowledge empowerment strategies that are implemented to local communities of marine protected areas, also known as MBAs. The second example concerns the massive spread of information about fisheries through fisheries ecolabeling. MBAs are discrete geographic areas of the sea established by international, national, territorial, tribal or local laws designated to enhance the long-term conservation of natural resources. The effect of overfishing affects species and ecosystems as it reduces the density and the biomass of target species. The results of overfishing are shown through the food webs and the quality of the seafloor. So, a main goal of MBAs is to protect the biomass and the density of these areas. In order to achieve this goal, in the context of MBAs, uh, several restrictions are enforced or even the total ban of fishing. It is a common issue nowadays that in many marine protected areas there are no measures taken or the measures that are, are taken are never enforced. These MPAs are usually called as paper parks. In order for a paper park to become an effective MPA, community knowledge empowerment is required. This knowledge empowerment includes the capacity building of individuals as well as the active participation of the stakeholders. So we are now going to see the case of Santorini as an example of effective, mar effective marine protected area. So, in 2010, Pierre-Yves Cousteau expressed an interest in the area. <clears throat> this followed by several meetings and discussions with the local fishers and divers and other sea users, trying to incorporate them in the whole uh, procedure of designated a marine protected area. There was a common agreement on no take zone in a specific area of the island. <clears throat> and in 2012, researchers from the Hellenic Institute of Marine Research conducted an ecological baseline study. 
and this um, gave them the opportunity also to, together with um, the local community, to design a management plan. What was the outcome of the ecological baseline study? Overexploitation of fish resources. And this was a critical moment for the whole effort um, in the area. So the next steps were mostly focused on engaging the local community and also communicate this um, joint effort to a broader audience. So in 2014, <clears throat> there was a conference that uh, um, there were different conferences held in order to inform the local community. So people uh, and local stakeholders uh, were interacting with researchers that they were communicating their uh, results trying to to involve them in the management process. Then they created a society that uh, with a scope to found and uh, implement the management plan of the protected area and enforce of course the management plan afterwards. And this was a society mixed with all different kinds of stakeholders. community about the scientific results of their baseline study and also trying to engage them in the management process. Although again this was not a designated area at the moment. And then a group of stakeholders created involving fishermen, local authorities, scientists and any kind of sea user. And the aim of this group was the implementation and the enforcement of the management plan. Again, although this was not a designated area. Then stakeholders, again, by discussing the management plan, placed and defined the proposed no-take zone. And then the commission, and then they created a commission, uh, which was more formal than a group of stakeholders, consisting of uh, local authorities and stakeholders like fishers, divers, and of course scientists. Then 2017 was a key moment. A society was created and the aim of the society was the initiation of the marine protected area. Although still the area is not designated as a marine protected area by the Greek government, the region is now partially in the Natura 2000 network. So you can see that this is a long process, but what is the key in this, in this effort is that although it's not designated, the involvement of the local community makes this, make this protected area an actual protected area because all the management plan and all the, um, <clears throat> and the research behind is enforced by the local community, although there is no formal designation, which is um, a key in the actual implementation of uh, management policies and the protection of marine protected areas. To take so this of course is a development of stakeholders on the management of the region voluntary measures for the protection of the area like the no take zone but also other measures cooperation with local restaurants for the promotion of products from sustainable fisheries like the in a great example is what is going to happen in September 2019 so the promotion of consumption of alien species exist in the area <coughs> and more uh, scientific reports the involvement of scientists is a key aspect for this effort because they they, they base um, their um, the measures they propose and everything on scientific research and every step of the past and the future of this process is based on the exchange of knowledge between scientists and local stakeholders, which is um, 
is very important in in all areas, uh, in all marine protected areas. Science is the baseline, and then local stakeholders can discuss on top of these findings and propose uh, measures and um, not take zones and things like this. Protection. This is a bottom-up approach. We will discuss about eco-labeling and specifically on fisheries eco-labels. So I guess you all know but the eco-labels in packages of fish products indicate um, if the fish was fished with a sustainable method and the origin. So it helps a lot in the traceability of the product. So fishery certification requires specific procedures and criteria on a voluntary standards of food and agriculture organization, FAO, as you, most of you know the organization. So fisheries certification is a tool that empowers consumers to make responsible choices and contribute meaningfully to the sustainable management of the fish stocks. So, for example, Marine Stewardship Council aims to the protection of the marine environment, focused on the fishing activities. So, it has multiple um, indicators, not only per se related to the targeted species, but also related to the environment or even the activity, the fishing activity, retailers and all different uh, actors uh, participate in the fishing industry. While there is a, another case study of a single attribute, the dolphin safe tuna, which aims specifically to reduce uh, the dolphin by cuts in the tuna industry, in the tuna fisheries. So this, um, this eco-label, when you see this eco-label on a product, you know that while fishing this, uh, this fish, there was no dolphin bycatch. So this is a single attribute because it, uh, it deals with a specific uh, aspect of, uh, of the fishing industry. Standard and criteria. So here we will uh, discuss about the MSC, the Marine Stewardship Council certification process. You will see that there is a confidential phase, so the fishery or a representative of a specific fishery that can be, let's say, the um, sardine or epipelagic uh, fishing fleet of North Aegean, which is an actual case. So the persons of a specific port, in Kavala port, they decided that they are interested to invest in uh, uh, obtaining an MSC certification. So they, conduct, they conducted MSC. And then a third party, so an evaluator, which is a third party, is not MSC, is not uh, someone related to the uh, fishing fleet, decides that uh, accepts the call of MSC and goes through a specific process to understand if there is a possibility this fishery to get an MSC certification in the future or not. If it's not, then uh, the procedure stops. If it's yes, then we go to the public phase. So um, the fishery is assessed again by a third party based on the MSC principles, which you can go in the website of Marine Stewardship Council and you can see there are clear criteria. <clears throat> and then there is a whole procedure involved uh, different stakeholders, scientists, fishery experts, local authorities, monitoring authorities, of course the fishermen, and any other actor related to the fishing industry in the area and related to the fishery that will obtain the Marine Stewardship Council certifi certificate. And this might take uh, some years. So this, this first step, the first um, 
public face is mostly related uh, to the fishing improvement process, which is a first process, and then the fishery goes straight to a um, to the certification process. There are different criteria. You see that the this uh, assessment team collects fishery information. Um, they do a full assessment and a draft report, certification body reviews, draft report and make a determination if the fishery complies with the MSC standards and the fishery will be audited each year. So um, you will see also that the stakeholders can comment on the draft produced by um, the assessment team. And then based on the criteria that they get the standard score, maximum is 100, you will see that there are different levels of acceptance, is fail 60, 80 and 100. If scoring is above 80, the fisher is certified. If not, and is close, let's say, to 60, then uh, there is a conditional pass, which means will be assessed again after some improvements. If it's failed, then they have to go through all the process again. Fisheries, 67 fisheries under assessment, while 17 have been suspended. What is interesting is also that 19% of the certified fisheries are required to make at least one improvement to maintain the certification. So this means that there is a process that involves and the fisheries have to, after obtaining the certification, still um, they assessed and they have to to prove that uh, they keep the good practices that they adopted in order to get the certification. As you can see, most of the, um, of the um, certified fisheries are in the North Sea, so England, Holland, France, a little bit in Spain, and then Norway, all this area, Iceland. Then is in West uh, Atlantic coast of the United States. So these are the two hotspots, let's see. The local ecosystems and the local fisheries, which is the absolute goal of this uh, company. Um, so you can see here that uh, in, after the recent report, they detected that uh, in most cases there is an improve um, of the stock biomass uh, in, in the areas uh, that there are certified fisheries. You can see, let's say, the, the example of uh, New Zealand is uh, characteristic. There is a huge difference before and after. Um, however, this you know is always a little bit uh, difficult to define such uh, such uh, results and such improvements due to the lack of data on the previous state. Because after MSC starts, uh, they continuously collect data, but before, the normally the the lack uh, there is a lack of data. So. We can say that people buying MSC products support marine conservation on a very first level, which is true, because they made the informed um, decisions and they decide to buy more environmental friendly products than others that they don't know the origin of the species and how it was caught and if the fishery is sustainable or not. So there are some criteria that help um, the consumer to decide if uh, he or she wants to be environmental friendly or not. However, this information refers to um, to only the assessed species, which means that although there are some criteria in um, MSC regarding the bycats, and yeah, this criteria is strong. However, is not um, is not very strong, which means maybe. Um, in some cases, the population assessed or the fish stock assessed uh, is fish sustainable and the population is increasing, 
but uh, what is really happening with the rest of the species, and especially if they are by cuts of the spe of the fishery that is certified. Only cuts thousands of vulnerable marine animals, discard excessive amounts of sea life as waste, and irreversibly destroy seafloor habitats. Uh, while it continues uh, to cut some overfish species, of course there are the criteria uh, that the MSC has, but uh, it's not always that they can cover the whole framework of uh, an area, because a fish stock is only part of a marine area. And also there are credibility issues uh, for the companies conducting the assessment because based on the FAO standards it has to be a third party evaluation. So there, is, there are different third parties that evaluate um, specific fisheries and this is where there are some credibility issues by people criticizing MSC. And then, of course, what MSC is not considering, and because it's not part of uh, the assessment process of the company, is the social aspect of fisheries. So there are fisheries certified, um, let's say, in, um, in Asia, that uh, they've, they've been accused for slavery and other use of, uh, non-human use of um, employees. Specifically for the Mediterranean, that is also, let's say, a special interest of ours, um, it's almost impossible a uh, fishery to obtain an MSC certificate due to this uh, bycatch, um, um, bycatch indicator. And um, this leaves no room because in the Mediterranean we have a high bycatch rate and our fisheries are not single or um, they're not single species but they're uh, multiple species. In any case for the criticism against the MSC you can visit the Make Stewardship Count uh, initiative uh, which uh, is led uh, by some big organizations followed by several organizations and um, by by providing specific examples and letters to MSC, there is a discussion between them on how to how to involve the MSC process. So, in this slide, the most significant references are suggested by us. Thank you, and we will be happy to provide you with extra information you may need or answer to your, to your questions. Thank you very much.